important to you and your community. Hello and welcome to Life Esteem again. Always great to have you as a viewer. Thank you so much for watching. Today we're going to talk with a dynamic couple. They are Chris and Carol Green, and they have Fruitful Life Network. I love that, man. Yeah. Fruitful Life Network. And a married couple doing it together. Come on. Oh, yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Must. And you guys have been publishing. Wow. Look at books. They have a number of books out. What, 15 books? Uh, we have 14 books. 14 and, books. Uh, okay. and, 10, and 10 of them, we make them available online okay. uh, as downloadables uh, online for free, as Go free ahead. downloads. They're oh, basically man. devotionals, okay. uh, books that we were written out of really just uh, uh, sending a weekly email mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. people that were following our ministry. And so one of our a uh, recipient said, why don't you take all those emails and put them into it and make a book or a devotional. Make them, devotional. Yeah. Make them devotionals. And so we started doing that and each year we've compiled all 50 of those emails and, and into, into a book. And so we ended up with wow. 10 of them. <laughs> 10 years of uh, that. and, yeah. and That's a brilliant addition. idea though. Yeah. 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 yeah, we still give her lots of credit for that. <laughs> That wonderful awesome. stuff. And so very much what you do is a ministry. Yes, yes it is. Tell us all about it. Um, well, Fruitful Life Network is really a, a culmination of what we now say is 40 years wow. of life together. We actually met in college <laughs> in August of 1977. Oh, my God. And oh my so uh, nice. uh, we have had quite a journey. We've served in, in uh, St. Louis, Missouri, mm -hmm. uh, in a local church there with my actually my older brother. Mm -hmm. uh, and we served for 17 years there. We mm -hmm. were the youth pastors, the young adult pastors. Uh, we did some, everything. Of, some, some of, of everything, everything. Uh, 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 over singles ministry, marriage ministry, um, uh, media outreach, benevolence outreach, you name it, we, we probably it. had something to do with it. That was 17 years there. And then back in 2004, our home church uh, sent us, it was an actual church plant, official church plant to, to Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, which happens to be my wife's hometown. I'm born and raised in St. Louis. Uh -huh. okay. And we met in college, and of course we moved to my home, mm -hmm. and uh, we were there for 24 years, 17 years in the ministry there. Mm -hmm. And then in 2004, our home church actually sent us uh, as a church plant here to Harrisburg, okay. uh, and Harrisburg being her home. Yeah, amazing. <laughs> yeah, full circle. Full yes. circle for her, and we've been here for 13 years, 13 so we've now. been in ministry 30 years. Fantastic. And so a fruitful mm -hmm. life uh, uh, was really is. Uh, has three parts to it. There's the coaching mm -hmm. part, uh, coaching and consulting, and mm -hmm. and uh, we have been providing everything from uh, uh, family coaching, marriage coaching. Yeah. Um, we've uh, actually went and got our certification as life coaches, so yes. we're known in the Harrisburg community mm -hmm. as community Fantastic. life coaches. Okay. Uh, we uh, uh, served at Pennsylvania Career Link for nine months, uh -huh. uh, holding workshops there mm -hmm. uh, for the unemployed. Uh, somehow we found ourselves then connected with one of the women's shelters in Allison Hill. Mm -hmm. uh, they brought us in there to do some coaching with the women, with the residents. And then the executive director there, Denise Britton, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know Denise, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> brought us in to start uh, providing coaching and training for the staff. And so uh, we've been there about a couple of years now uh, oh, wow. uh, That's working. Been exciting. That's been very yeah. exciting and very rewarding and mm -hmm. fulfilling. Mm -hmm. uh, then lo local churches uh, started asking us to come in, at, whether it's to speak on a Sunday morning or to uh, mm -hmm. work with their leaders or to yes. work with uh, their volunteer, their volunteer staff, 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 helping them in their outreach. So mm -hmm. and that's one part. That's the coaching part. Then mm -hmm. there's, there's mm -hmm. the uh, church. We actually do have a church, right. and we call that the Fruitful Life Learning Center. Center. Uh -huh. uh, a little bit different name, but right. it's because uh, uh, we we feel that uh, it's really necessary for the uh, people, for sp specifically heads of households, mm -hmm. to really become equipped mm -hmm. uh, as leaders in the home. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a lot of learning. Jesus said, "Come, take my yoke upon you, and learn of yes. me." And so we call the our church the Learning Center. Wow. We're learning of the Lord and learning what it means to lead in our houses and in on our families. On a practical basis. On a very practical mm -hmm. basis. Yeah, mm -hmm. we don't really do a lot of that teaching. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that's not to put it down, but we're not really heavy uh, uh, cerebral mm -hmm. <laughs> teachers. We try to keep it very keep practical, it keep on. it simple, keep yeah. it very practical. 
Mm -hmm. uh, so that no matter whether it's a, a two-parent family or mm -hmm. the family's being led by a grandmother or a mom or an aunt, it doesn't matter. You know, I think sometimes uh, we get hung up on the family situation. In yes. fact, sometimes when we talk about our family aspect, I've had people say, well, everybody's family is not the same. I said, well, I didn't, well, that's not what we that's said. Right, right. We already understand that every family is not the same, but that's why we say our ministry is just to the household. Yeah. Whatever that household Whatever is made up of, yes. uh, you still need leadership uh -huh. and you need to be equipped for the role that you find yourself playing in that family. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that also involves uh, 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 helping uh, um, how do we put it? Uh, training them to become ready responders yeah. in the community. Like That's the it. phrase ready that we responders. use. Ready responders. We know yeah, or everybody's yeah. familiar with the phrase first responders, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but uh, we use the phrase ready responders like so it. that you can really know how to handle uh, the crisis situations mm -hmm. that happen in, in 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 our neighborhoods, in our families, uh, in our churches. And so we feel like it's really necessary mm -hmm. to teach. Uh, heads of households to become ready responders. Do you find people from all uh, racial backgrounds, economic backgrounds coming to you? Yes, yes. we do. Okay, very really good. We, that's very been good. our history. Mm -hmm. our, uh, we've actually existed uh, for 13 years mm -hmm. here in Harrisburg. Uh, the name of the church was initially, we called it uh, Fruitful Life Worship Center. Mm -hmm. Then we changed it to Fruitful Life. No, then we changed it to oh, Urban right. Life Church. Mm -hmm. And now it's the Fruitful Life Learning Center. <laughs> 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 Urban Life yeah. uh, Church, yeah. and uh, but we wanted to expand it beyond uh, mm -hmm. the urban community, even though yeah. that's very much a part of my sure. life. I mean, I'm born and raised in St. Louis. Uh, my wife and I, part of our uh, earlier time of living uh, mm -hmm. as a young couple, we lived in Ferguson, and, mm -hmm. and, and, and right. many people became aware of Ferguson, you know, because sure. of the incidents with Mike Brown and all of that. Mm -hmm. and, but uh, that's my world. Uh, I'm a, we're city kids. She yeah. happened to be from, uh, how do you say from you? Hill. Yeah, she's <laughs> born, in, born in Uptown and raised on the hill. Yeah. Right. And I'm from Northside St. Louis, and those who are familiar with St. Louis, you know what that means when oh, I say yeah. I'm from Northside oh, yeah. St. Louis. And um, so that's very much our world. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that's been happening is that our world has been getting expanded since we've been here yeah. in this part of the country. Yeah. Uh, we find ourselves mm -hmm. now connected with rural oh, community yeah. people. Which has been the first time. It was the first time really in my life because it never really. Well, how did that happen? How did the rural communities discover you or uh, you discover them? It was actually, a, mm -hmm. a, a, I volunteered to do a website for a prayer movement that okay. was taking place back in 2013 mm -hmm. and uh, a rural pastor just took a liking to me and okay. my wife and invited us to his church and mm -hmm. and then invited us to speak mm -hmm. at his church so mm -hmm. here's these black pastors ministering yeah. in a total white rural mm -hmm. uh, setting but it was so comfortable mm -hmm. Uh, for us because one of the things you learn in all of these years of ministry that we've been involved in, we're well-traveled. We don't talk about it much, but mm -hmm. we're well-traveled. Okay. Uh, so you learn how to adjust and adapt to whatever environment you go into, whatever culture, you know, whatever whatever culture, culture you step mm -hmm. into. Mm -hmm. And so ever since then, they've been invi in inviting us every month to mm -hmm. come and minister in their church. Oh, and it's wow. been an education. Yeah. A at the end of each service, they have a meal. Oh. And uh, and we sit down and talk, and we've talked about Ferguson okay. in this church. They've asked questions okay. about yeah. what's going on in the yeah. black community and why black people re, mm -hmm. uh, uh, respond to things mm -hmm. the way we do. And they, they were genuine, genuine mm -hmm. questions. And yes. so we found that uh, somehow we ended up with this open dialogue taking place, yes. and mm -hmm. we realized that uh, something special is happening here. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, even when we were sent out, uh, to Harrisburg from our home church, and I know you're familiar with this, when, mm -hmm. when the elders in the church, they pray for you exactly. and lay hands on you mm -hmm. to officially send you forth. Well, send one of the forth. prayers that was prayed over us was that uh, we would be a bridge building ministry that like God was going to use us to build bridges between blacks and white. I like it. And so it's actually coming to pass. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. so, well, let me just let the lady Oh, no, I was getting ready to say it's not, it's not just mm -hmm. Um, ethnic though mm -hmm. yeah. in the bridge building it's also been generational yeah. um, mm -hmm. it's it's just been an interesting 
adventure. <laughs> <laughs> it really has. It, has. it really has. Fantastic. Fantastic. Now you've been here, you said, if I understand, you said 13, 13 years. 13 years. Mm -hmm. years. Yes. Where have you been? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I feel like I needed to know you. Oh my. <laughs> well, I think that intentionally we have um, been under the radar. Uh, just like anybody else, when we first moved here, we, we were meeting in a facility and in a building. But one of the things that we discovered was there is so much church hurt mm -hmm. in this community. Yes. And being outsiders coming in, mm -hmm. a it, we realized it was going to be a while before right. people could really accept us. And we also found out mm -hmm. that there have been a lot of outsiders that have come into this community and they've taken advantage of people. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, I'm not saying that to... Uh, to you know, downplay anybody else, right. talk about anybody sure. else's mm -hmm. ministry, but that is part of the history. Yeah. And it's everywhere. Yeah. And it's everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. And so there's just been, so since so many people have experienced that, mm -hmm. we've had to kind of step back mm -hmm. and really allow people the time that it would take to get to know us mm -hmm. and for us to get to know them. We actually worked for the state for nine years. Mm -hmm. I, I, I worked in a very wonderful job working for the Department of Education. Yes, mm -hmm. you and I. <laughs> Actually worked the, of it, I worked for the Department of Ed. I, was, I worked on the executive floor yeah. uh, directly with the Secretary of Education, uh, and I was in the press office. Oh, so okay. and that's part of my background, mm -hmm. communications. Mm -hmm. That's what I went to school for anyway. Fantastic. So I found myself in my field, and I worked there for nine years. Yeah. Carol worked for uh, the Department uh, of Labor and Industry. Oh, fantastic. Uh, yes, uh, working, um, uh, working for the referees, uh, setting up uh, <laughs> <laughs> meetings and yeah, uh, yeah for uh, hearings. So uh, we, we, we actually have become mm -hmm. a part of the community. And so that's why no one really knew about us. We were working our jobs, raising our families, yes. our mm -hmm. children, mm -hmm. which we have three sons. They're all adults, grown and gone uh, now, two are married. Mm -hmm. And we now have a granddaughter, a oh. one-year-old granddaughter. We're very happy about that. Mm -hmm. But we needed that time, even as a family, to, sure. to uh, uh, I, we, we, we really realized we needed that time to bond with our children mm -hmm. uh, because we had been in full-time ministry yeah. for so long. Mm -hmm. And uh, and we be just became a part of the, the, the community, fabric. the fabric of this community, and mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. uh, suddenly we're getting this uh, uh, recognition. <laughs> That's good. So, so, you know, we were so impressed uh, with uh, you at the uh, fifth year anniversary for someone to tell it to. Oh, yeah. Yes. I mean, your story, oh, your testimony was just so powerful. Oh, yes, And yes. I was like, where are these two individuals been? <laughs> <laughs> and you're right across the hall from me, and I didn't even know that. Yes, yes. I know. <laughs> it's, really, it's really something. I, I think that it's very uh -huh. necessary. Uh, to live in the timing of God for your life. There, yes. Of course, there were things that we wanted to do mm -hmm. when we first moved here. We was, I was ready to go. I was going fast and moving mm -hmm. and everything. But if things hadn't developed the way they did, we would not be meeting you now. Yes. Yeah. And the yeah. connections that we're making, like with someone to tell it to, mm -hmm. yeah. and, uh, and the women's shelter, yeah. and being at Career Link, uh, working for the state, all of that was necessary part of the journey. That's we right. have great appreciation for it now. Yeah. <laughs> it now. just wasn't now. It just <laughs> wasn't the journey that we thought we That's were going right. to take. We That's thought right. we'd come here, plant a church, right. and people yeah. would come. But yeah. God's plan was that we would come outside of the church walls yes. and live and work and serve in the community uh, just like you guys have Absolutely. done for That's many, many do. years. Yeah. Uh, I think you have to earn the right Did to speak go. to a community. Yeah. And having just moved here back in 2004, mm -hmm. no one knew us, and we didn't have the right to speak. Yeah. Uh, we, yeah, I believe you have to earn that right. I think also, too, uh, it took time for God to deal with our expectations. Mm -hmm. We came with a picture in our head as yeah. to how it was going to happen, yeah. Yeah. how it was going to work out. But God had something totally different in mind. Yeah. So he had to first deal with us with our expectations. And, and, and uh, he began, and so... It, and allowing him to do that, he's taking us a whole different way than yeah. what we expected to yes. uh, how we were to plant here, how we were to um, become a part of Harrisburg. Yeah. Um, it's just been totally different than what yeah. we expected. What we thought, yeah. And, and I, it's been fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and after learning more of the history through you, yes. oh uh, my God. Harrisburg is an amazing place. Mm -hmm. And I think it is a national secret. Yeah. 
yes. um, with all of the people that have been born and raised here. Great accomplishments have come from people here. And um, uh, the, uh, our city went through kind of a similar renaissance. Mm -hmm. uh, St. Louis was the fastest dying wow. city yes. in America back in the 70s and 80s. Mm -hmm. And through the 90s, they started a campaign that they called Sold on St. Louis, where they started uh, trying to instill a sense of pride and dignity for our own. Yes. And we adopted that even in our mm -hmm. church and mm -hmm. amongst our youth and young adults. We told them to stop imitating, this was the 90s, mm -hmm. so we, said that we told them to stop imitating Tupac on the West Coast mm -hmm. and Notorious yeah. on the East Coast. Mm -hmm. You guys have your own style here in the Midwest. Yeah. Go with your own flow, your own style. So we encourage young people in our church, our youth, youth our children, our teenagers, mm -hmm. write your own songs, choreograph your own dances, yeah. write your own poetry, mm -hmm. stop imitating everybody else. Mm -hmm. One of the products of Sold on St. Louis was, you know, the rapper Nelly came oh, forth. Yeah. Uh, but that was because our city made an intentional effort mm -hmm. to make the next generation appreciate your own mm -hmm. style. Mm -hmm. And so we feel like that's one of the messages that we have for Harrisburg. Stop seeing, looking at yourself as we're in the shadow of mm -hmm. New York, we're inferior to Philadelphia. Yeah. No, you mm -hmm. have your own unique style. You have an incredible legacy mm -hmm. and history of people that have come from Harrisburg, and they are still are here. That's right. Living legacies that are right here. And so if you if if we will start appreciating what you already have, I would love to share this with other pastors. Mm -hmm. You don't have to bring in big name preachers yeah. and folks to come to Harrisburg. Mm -hmm. You got you got gold and diamond and precious stones Amen. right here in the soil. Amen. Uh, just start with the people that are already here. You don't mm -hmm. need to bring in some big name. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. You have incredible people like you guys that are already Science. here. No. Uh, if you'd appreciate what you already have, you're going to find a tremendous future for I this city. That. You know, when they first started the citywide revival, I don't know if you attended that or not, it was in the forum. Oh, yes. And wow. it was packed. You couldn't find a seat. It, wow. it was absolutely packed. And the first preacher of the hour was uh, Owens, uh, Michael Owens. Wow. And he was the pastor of the church down on, what is it? No, no, Capitol. And, oh, uh, up, up Tabernacle. Tabernacle. He's down okay. at Tabernacle. Mm -hmm. And so him and his brother Mock created that, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. And, uh, but he brought the first message. And then they started bringing in the Jeremiah Wrights. And, uh, yeah. and we were ready then for the big names. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. But the truth of the matter is, we always had those, I mean, yeah. come on. Yeah. 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 Mike Rollins can preach. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, man, this is, and I forget where he's from. He's in Detroit now. Oh, okay. yeah. Okay. Yeah. But you got something special that's right here. already here. It's here. And, and, yeah. you know. and I, 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 I actually... Carol and I, we actually went back and looked at some of previous uh, uh, interviews that you've done here on Life oh, of Steam. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I, I remember you talking with the Dr. Dred Scott. Oh, I'm really man. impressed by Perky. that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Have you met Dred Scott? I never met oh, him, but he's me. named after Dred Scott, Dred Scott. And the Dred Scott decision was made oh, yeah. in my hometown. Oh, yes, right. in St. Louis. Yeah. And so, the, you know, it's, yeah. it's really difficult to explain what it's like mm -hmm. to live in a city where the decision was made mm -hmm. to uphold uh, a thought that we were only worth three-fifths of a yeah. human being. Yeah. Amen. And mm -hmm. when the judge made the decision, mm -hmm. the commentary after making that decision in St. Louis mm -hmm. was mm -hmm. the black man has no rights mm -hmm. that a white man is bound to respect. I read that just the other day. And mm -hmm. so the, the living, day. growing up in yeah. the spirit of that, mm -hmm. And in a, in a life where that really is in the soil and mm -hmm. people actually feel that way, it is a miracle yeah. that uh, God has raised up me and my wife and here we are ministering in rural communities. Mm -hmm. Because, that's right. <laughs> you know, look at the irony of that. Mm -hmm. But that's, that's just something. been God. But you, you, you asked, you asked uh, uh, brother, uh, Pastor Scott, this, com this question about the anger mm -hmm. that's still in the community. Sure. And I will submit to you that part of the anger is not just the racism and all mm -hmm. of that. Actually, that's a part of it. But Carol and I have been uh, got been formulating this plan as part of our coaching mm -hmm. to address the community according to the grief uh -huh. 
and the depression mm. yes. that we are dealing with here in Harrisburg on a community-wide basis. You know from our training oh, that people go through stages after a loss. Yes. Yes. You know, remember mm -hmm. there's shock, mm -hmm. denial, mm -hmm. sadness, mm -hmm. anger. Kubler-Ross, yeah. You know, mm -hmm. uh, all of that is part of the, of the process. Yeah. Well, just think about it. If we address the anger that we see in our community. What's that anger? I remember you asking me that question, yeah. and I leaped when I heard you <laughs> ask that question because we, we actually feel like the anger that we're looking at is part of unresolved grief. Oh, no question. Unresolved yeah, loss. Yeah. You know, when we hear about the things that have happened, the shootings that have taken place, the violent acts of crime, uh, things that, you know, uh, decisions that have been made that have taken funding mm -hmm. away. Sure. Our community has been repeatedly thrown back into the grieving cycle. Yes. And so when we see children acting out, parents going off, mm -hmm. uh, all the things that we're looking at, I believe we're looking at various stages of continual grief in our community. There was a study that came out, uh, I think it was last year, it might have been earlier this year, that talked about uh, when people go to war, what is it? Oh, uh, yeah. uh, yeah. Post-traumatic stress. Post -traumatic stress. Yeah. 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 That's that. But uh, what's the sister's name out of uh, Oregon that does all that work? Doctor. Um, oh, the um, one that did the. Uh, yeah, Jane. she was. Yeah, Jane. it's going to hit me. It wasn't Jane. <laughs> no, not Jane. Was but anyhow, she, was she does the whole thing of post-traumatic stress yeah. syndrome. Yeah. Uh, for African American people. Yes, uh, and it's absolutely. And I, I'm trying to call her name, but anyhow, excellent, excellent. Yeah. She was down at State, Penn State, mm -hmm. Harrisburg. Yes. You know, instead of, and we could have had her speak all night. Mm -hmm. But that's you're absolutely right. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. we are so in shock and so in. Yeah. And, yeah. and it keeps repeating. Keeps repeating. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. I think that sometimes when we try to target, even though it's absolutely important we try to target the issues of racism mm -hmm. and discrimination but mm -hmm. for us we feel like part of our call of being here in Harrisburg mm -hmm. and that we were actually sent for this reason mm -hmm. to help to rebuild restore and renew yeah. hearts and homes mm -hmm. and so we try to stay in our lane mm -hmm. uh, and our lane is most of what we're dealing with are issues of the heart. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that in Proverbs, you know, guard your heart because right. out of it springs the issues of life. Right. Mm -hmm. And so since hearts and homes have been left unguarded, mm -hmm. they've been attacked, they've been devastated. They just, Very you true. know, and mm -hmm. we're all living with and dealing with the aftermath of the continual devastation. Sometimes I get the question, or we did get the question uh, from the white community and white friends that we have uh, of, why are ang why are black people still so angry? You know, mm -hmm. slavery's over with, and mm -hmm. Jim Crow laws, all that stuff is gone. I said, well, no, I said, said, we're not upset about what happened 50 years ago. We're mm -hmm. upset about what happened yesterday. There you go. <laughs> and, and if you can't see what's happening yesterday, you can't see what happened yesterday. Yes. yesterday yes. And that's, that's a whole other discussion that we need to have. <laughs> and, and, uh, but it's so real. And, and it people, are, you know, they got the heads in the sand, and they're trying to mm -hmm. pretend it's not there anymore. Yeah. You know, black and white. Just, yeah. Oh, it yeah. doesn't exist. Well, are you kidding me? Of course, it exists. It's, it's, the question is what are we going to do about it? What are we going to yeah. do? Yeah. yeah. So have you heard of the Community Responders Network? No, we haven't. Yeah, you would be wonderful for that. Uh, there's oh, a wonderful group of people yes. who in Harrisburg here have created this called uh, Community Responders Network. Excellent. And they have worked with uh, the local police, from the state police down to it, you know, in terms yes. of the training and the things you're talking okay. about. They've worked with any kind of issue that jumps up there you know, approach it immediately mm -hmm. yes. okay. in terms of uh, what do we do now? Yeah. And they take that, you know, leadership role and they're proactive as mm -hmm. opposed to just waiting to waiting react, you know. Yes. Uh, it's a wonderful group that I would highly recommend yes. that you get to know and they get to know you. Ann Van Dyke, Margie uh, Kostra, Margie Kostra uh, and uh, so Samia, many others. Samia, Samia, Samia Malik. Malik. Yeah. Uh, they're great people and they oh. represent the entire community. Yes. You know? okay. Yeah, and we've been a part of it. You know, we haven't been as active lately, yeah. but anytime something goes on, we, we participate with them in anything that they do. Okay. So, uh, well, I want to get back yeah. to these books. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, yeah. I'm looking at this one book, and I'm really, really excited about this. What now? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Navigating the maze of transition, can I hold that trials, up so maybe they can and show change. The cover there? Now, uh, that too came out of the. Uh, that was actually birth. Uh, out of our work with young adults. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Back we this was our the first book that we ever published. It was it was actually published by uh, uh, 
company called One Publication, One Rib Publication, Nassau, Bahamas, oh. uh, by our good friend, Pastor Dave Burrows, who is now the pastor of Bahamas Faith Ministries. Wow. Those of you who are familiar with that, that was okay. the church of ministry of Dr. Miles Monroe. Miles Monroe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, young, the yeah. brother who is now the pastor of their church is a good friend of ours from yeah. back in college yeah. days, and he published our first book, What Now, Go back ahead. in 2002, mm -hmm. and it was a response to uh, the questions that young adults were asking mm -hmm. us repeatedly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, the transition coming, whether it's out of high school, into college, mm -hmm. college into the, the real the world, yeah, transition the into mm -hmm. uh, military. In other words, that very difficult 20-something time of life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we provided what we call eight nuggets of wisdom to help you trend, make this transition. Well, as life moved on, we moved on, uh, and moving here and started uh, working and serving in the community, mm -hmm. we realized that this was for more than just the 20 somethings. I was going to tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> there were a whole lot of other transitions <laughs> beyond the 20s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so we rewrote the yeah. book, okay. Okay. the same eight nuggets of wisdom, right. but just applied it to all of the mazes yeah, yeah. and yeah. transitions and trials. Yeah, However, there is this wonderful conference called the Robert Lynch Student Leadership Conference. Yeah, it takes place right now. They're doing it here in Harrisburg. Mm -hmm. We just had it in uh, October. October. Yeah, October. And they're bringing about 300 to 400 students, African American students mm -hmm. mostly, from all over Pennsylvania. And they do workshops. And we've done workshops now for 30 years or more. And I will tell you that you would be excellent for them. Oh. Then, especially what you're talking about right that's now in this book. Yeah. That would oh, be, be fantastic. Awesome. And, and it's a, you know, they do a Friday night through Sunday. We've that's got amazing. a spiritual service that we do every Sunday. Uh, okay. And it's fantastic. Oh, yeah. You that would be and fun. then also you get a chance to get access to all those people from all these other colleges. And that's like, <laughs> it's beautiful. I'm telling you, it really okay. is. You know. See, hearing you say that, mm -hmm. that feeds right into what my wife was saying earlier about the journey. Yeah. I see how it was in our heart to do these things, but mm -hmm. God had to take us through this journey mm -hmm. to connect with you That's to right. now That's here right. you are connecting us with yeah with others. It wasn't specifically way. through a church, mm -hmm. yeah. the church paradigm. Yeah. 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 Well, so. And I say most churches, the truth be told, 85% of all churches are 50 members or less. Yes, they are. They're small. Yeah. And so most we always think about the church being real big. Real, real, right. Yeah. No. Not, it's and that is, a, that is a serious misnomer. Yes. I'm glad that you pointed that mm -hmm. out. The, uh, most churches are, are small. The mega church mm -hmm. phenomenon is still yeah. uh, very small percentages of churches really very ever small. get that big. Mm -hmm. And we have found ourselves actually part of a movement that's taking place on a global scale. Mm -hmm. There's like 112 million Christians mm -hmm. meet in their homes. Mm -hmm. that's uh, that's most right. because they're forced to, yes. others because they choose to. That's right. That's right. And mm -hmm. um, in America, we've mm -hmm. got a million Christians per year that mm -hmm. are leaving the institutional church setting yes and trying to meet they're trying to meet with God in a more personal way and so we're we're yeah I'm going to have to make a transition real quick because I want to mention this, and this is uh, a wonderful uh, center that's open, thanks to this lady sitting next to me, my <laughs> wife Pat <laughs> Gaston, <laughs> called the Life Esteem Holistic Health uh, and Wellness Center, and this is going to be a grand opening on December the 15th. You want to tell us about it? Yeah, from 10 to 3, I like people to come out and just get a sense and feel for the center, all the services we're going to be made available. Mm -hmm. And uh, any questions or something they have about how we move forward and invite such wonderful people like we have yes. here today mm -hmm. to look at and see how they can add to services that are provided at the center. Okay, okay. well, we're down to Looking less forward. than a minute here. Mm -hmm. We've run out of time. How can people contact you? They can contact us through our website. Okay. It's uh, fruitful-life.net. Mm -hmm. Fruitful-life.net. Fantastic. Well, Mr. and Mrs. Green, thank you so much for being a minister's green. Thank you for being here. And thank you for watching this program. I hope that you've enjoyed as much as we've enjoyed having them on. And uh, believe me, uh, have a fruitful life, and you'll have a happy life. Amen. Amen. See you next time here on Life of Standing.